Less than 700 miles from the North American continent lie the Bermudas, the world's most northerly group of coral islands. Partitioned off from the mainland by the Gulf Stream, Bermuda is host to thousands of visitors who each year seek warm sunshine, fun, sport, and relaxation. All types of cruise and cargo liners steam in and out of the beautiful harbor each day. The majority making port at the capital city of Hamilton, where passengers first set foot on Front Street, with its ever-present horse-drawn carriages waiting to carry the visitor through the city proper and over the low hills to its many spots of interest. The city itself is a lively place, but busy without hustle and bustle. And it is keep to the left, for this is a part of the British Empire. The Cenotaph, Bermuda's memorial to her sons who fell in World War I. Along the way, the carriage passes many resorts, guest houses, spacious residences, and beautiful panoramas that recall the immortal words of Tom Moore, the Irish poet who shortly after his arrival in the islands wrote, Oh, could you view the scenery, dear, that now beneath my window lies, you'd think that nature lavished here her purest wave, her softest skies, to make a heaven for love to sigh in, for bards to live and saints to die in. There are many modern resorts in Bermuda, and some boast swimming pools where experts often give exciting exhibitions. Contrasting the peaceful surroundings of the countryside, the visitor may encounter a traveling troupe of performers, who with much shouting and wailing go through the jumpy gyrations of the Gombe dance, originally brought to Bermuda from the East Indies. Weird masks and high plumaged headgear, something exotic and different for the spectator. And here is offered rare enticements for the angler. Over 400 species of fish abound in the surrounding waters. Tuna, marlin, barracuda, bonita, dolphin, rockfish, and wahoos are among the favorite catches. And they say the big ones never get away. Others like to fish with their eyes through the glass bottom boats. The sea gardens on the submerged coral reefs are filled with marine growths and vari-colored fish. Some beautiful. Some grotesque in appearance. Through the translucent waters, a submarine realm of enchantment unfolds. A new undersea world is revealed. At almost every turn of the road, there are tempting picnic grounds surrounded by unsurpassed beauty of nature where there are no barriers to complete relaxation. Some go in for spearfishing to supply the evening meal. Wearing a protective eye mask and webbed rubber flippers on his feet, the fisherman literally chases the fish underwater and like a hunter, sights his objective and fires. And there'll be fish in the pan for dinner. Off the beaten path are to be found unusual coral formations and natural arches. And bathing in the surf or in the still waters of the harbors is popular with both young and old alike. Bermuda's blue waters are clean, clear, salt, and buoyant. Buoyant enough to keep one afloat even after some rough treatment. The many beaches are of beautiful pink coral sand. Late afternoon finds outdoor terraces filled with those who have played hard and need a lift from a cup of tea, which of course everyone must do when in Bermuda. The lure of Bermuda's tinted crystal water seems to be irresistible to those who love to sail. Usually the breeze is constant, 
and fills the sails for swift tacking through the harbors, bays, and inlets. From early morning until long after sunset, sailing craft of all classes glide through the blue waters on pleasure bent, or as often happens, to stage impromptu races. Bermuda's rolling terrain, liberally interspersed with water areas and the wealth of charming views, have inspired golf architects to provide velvet greens and spacious fairways second to none. There are many golf courses in Bermuda, and some overlook the beautiful panorama of islands in the Great Sound. What was probably Bermuda's first attraction is Devil's Hole a deep salt water pool where an amazing number of apparently ravenous fish and turtles abound. It is fascinating to fish with line and bait, but no hook, to see who can hoist the creatures highest out of the water before they relinquish their hold on the tempting morsel. At the easterly end of the islands stands the interesting town of St. George's. Here, much of Bermuda's history has been made. The narrow winding streets and quaint buildings retain much of their 17th century atmosphere. During the American Civil War, St. George's was a center for blockade runners, and many scenes have been played on this stage, historic, dramatic, comic, and tragic. Visitors in the spring are treated to unforgettable sights of nature's radiance. Fields upon fields of magnificent Easter lilies in full bloom, their beauty and grace are unsurpassed, and their pungent fragrance fills the air. Before the Easter lily season is over, great hedges of oleanders blossom forth in rare magnificence. The islands abound with a great variety of flowers, lush hedges, cedar, and spruce trees. Venerable St. Peter's at St. George's was first built in 1619. It stands on the site of the oldest English church in the Western world. Gates Fort was built in 1612 under the direction of the colony's first governor, Richard Moore. Looking seaward from the fort, one can see St. George's main ship channel from the Atlantic Ocean. And so away from the hubbub of hectic city life, visitors to this nature-blessed land find all means of relaxation, from the restful beauty of the countryside to the exciting and swift-moving sport of aquaplaning. Atop Gibbs Hill is the lighthouse, to beckon welcome to ships at sea and to blink a farewell light to those who must leave Bermuda's blue waters and coral shores. This land of restful beauty under the warming rays of a semi-tropical sun. <laughs> <laughs>